Think back to a time, maybe just yesterday, when you knew someone sacrificed for you. And when was the last time you can say with all honesty that you sacrificed something for someone or for something bigger than even yourself? To sacrifice is the free choice to lay down something of me for you, a willingness to lay something precious to us down for another's sake. Sacrifice is always a pain, and it's a pain transformed by love. Sacrificing for another means giving up something important to you for their benefit. It's not about completely neglecting your own needs or becoming a doormat or a martyr, but recognizing, recognizing situations where prioritizing someone else's needs is just the right thing to do. Sacrifice has many faces. It can be something as simple as sacrificing your time to help or our students deciding to not go out even with a lot of FOMO, not going out with their friends and instead spending a Friday or Saturday night hunkered down in the library. You who go out of your way to recycle, to pick up litter, or maybe of our community spending a Saturday planting daffodils last fall that recently bloomed all along Highway 64. It might be as simple as those who freely tend to our gardens, season after season, or put in hours, hours and hours helping us have an experience of faith like this choir does. And it can be a sacrifice as big as dedicating years of your life to taking care of a spouse. I think of a young woman named Claire in our community whose partner was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, one of the rapidly advancing kind. And she decided on the spot to marry him, knowing what was coming down the road, and yet not knowing how to prepare for it. she decided to marry him. One sacrifice after another until his death. And I have to tell you, I'm still inspired to be a better man because of her. Are you who take care of your parents who are disabled from age? You are students who are joining the military after graduation with a willingness to sacrifice it all Or my friend, who's a cop, walking up to any window of any car he pulled over, not knowing what would happen next. It could be a citizen of the United States, this time of year, actually happy to pay their taxes because they trust that in one way or another, it's going to help a lot of people who they don't even know, their fellow citizens. It could look like a priest sacrificing his dream of marriage or being a dad to be more available to you and to his God. Or how a good friend told me not too long ago she just got really, really sick. And in her words, it came out of both ends all day long. And her husband of 50 years rose to the occasion cleaning up mess after mess over and over again, she felt his love. And somewhere in between, 
like the one back home making a huge meal for us while we're somewhere else? Are those pesky emotions that keep getting in the way of us loving like we wish we could love, but they keep annoying us like gnats all around us, and we get distracted from giving ourselves in sacrifice to another because of these pesky emotions, like waking up crabby in the morning and choosing instead to be civil and engaging and maybe even put a smile and engage anyway, even though we didn't feel like it. In a moment of sacrifice, someone is laying down something for us. Are we for them? Sacrifice is nothing we really run towards, but it's something we end up being willing to do, please God, even if we do it begrudgingly. We are likely to complain about it some, but I wonder if we could kind of reframe that on a day like this reframe those sacrifices we are willing to make into something we might actually we might actually find joy in or at least meaning every day carries with it opportunities yes opportunities to sacrifice to help out by definition it's rarely fun by itself It's nothing that we could necessarily want to be doing on any given day, but it's something we say yes to even when it cuts deep and leaves us exhausted and turns us all around on the inside. The heart of the story we just heard proclaimed here tonight, and any time we gather around any altar anywhere, And hear the words of the consecration, for you, my body for you, my blood for you, centers around just that, right then and there, sacrifice, sacrifice. It's the heart of our faith, it's the heart of every love, it's the heart of every vocation, every marriage, and all parenting, friendships too end of our careers. Sacrifice. Tonight, just after our personal and collected prayers for all the world that follows this reflection, just after we quietly pray ourselves and also join the world in praying for these needs the church has identified as the greatest on a night like this, our deacon carries in from the back, a cross, carries into the darkness of the night, a cross, our cross. And he holds it high and chants, behold, 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 the wood of the cross. And that wood cross takes its place right in our midst for us. And we will each have a chance to reverence it however we choose, especially going on after the ceremony tonight. I hope you can stay. It's a powerful thing to watch. At the center of it all, our totem, our cross, a powerful symbol, his sacrifice, his bloody sacrifice that ended in death. But it was such a perfect sacrifice, so perfect actually, that the whole world has been reordered around it. Perfect because he made it in total freedom. Total freedom to say yes or no. He didn't have to do that. He was totally free to say yes or no. 
It was a sacrifice that was total for him, therefore, unconditional and free. Our sacrifices compared to his on that cross are so much more jumbled up in all our ulterior motives to get attention, to get sympathy, accolades, recognition, to get somebody to like us or to return a favor. Too often we keep score. All that undermines the power of sacrifice. But not all. For us on this side of the veil, what we do for others is never perfect. But you and I, we can work on it, you know? Pure of heart versus self-serving. To get it from 40-60 to 80-20, maybe some years down the road. If we keep chipping away at it. The more my sacrifice is for love, for the betterment of another, the more wholehearted in it I will be and free. The more that sacrifice is united with and aligned with the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, the freer I get along the way. It's like it is happening again, that cross for us. Sacrifice that changed the world. That centerpiece of Good Friday is sacrifice. It's what brings home to us the power of Jesus' love. Sacrifice always does. It always brings home to us how much we are loved. The symbol of the cross is it called a sacrifice and sacrifice freely and joyfully for another's sake. We squirm a bit when others go out of their way for us. It can make us awfully uncomfortable. It is for us when we have that squirming going on. It is for us to simply receive it, let it in, graciously. It seems to me that our culture is lacking in sacrifice, lacking in a sacrificial love. But sacrificial love is who we are and how we are and what we do. It should become habit for us. It should be our default position, no matter what we're feeling on any given day. We should not even have to think about it. And I know from my personal experience, thinking about it just gives us too much time to hesitate. Many of you who are closer to my age know the practice, the old Catholic practice, of offering it up. We used to do things for our pastor on his birthday. The things we were going to do, we were going to offer up for him on his birthday, our nation anniversary, whatever. Offering it up was an opportunity to repurpose the pain. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain the efficacy of it at all. But it had something to it, you know? To repurpose the pain in our lives for another. We offer it up. Some of you remember that. When I broke a couple of ribs last Christmas a year ago, somebody recommended that I offer it up. <laughs> the pain that day, or even just for the next hour. I don't know how it works in the mystery of things, but I can say it gave that awful pain a purpose, and somehow it became a bit more tolerable. I recommend it to you. Doing that is a quiet and messy love. You see, Jesus not only transforms our sacrifices, he lives there in every sacrifice. Behold the wood of the cross. 
our deacon will sing. It's all right there. It calls the best out in you. It decisively makes clear whether or not we will follow him. Whether or not, in this particular circumstances, we will love. Jim, tonight, sing those words with everything you got because it's urgent, because we keep forgetting. <laughs>